Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be looking at the upcoming likely severe weather and tornado outbreak for next week for the plains into the Midwest and even parts of the South. And after this video, I'll be posting a hurricane season video for Florida. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So we already have a 30%, a large 30% for day five. And this was this 30% actually already existed yesterday when it was still on day six, but it was much smaller. But this 30% has increased a lot and it, and it and today, uh, so this day five, 30 percent, and continues into day six, which a large 15 percent for pretty much the whole state of Illinois up to Wisconsin down to Arkansas. And I do think we could see a 30 percent here, but since since it's more of like uh, an arc arch um, shape, it's likely more a wind threat on day six. Day five, though, is the main threat so far. Um, very. Convec uh, very favorable for severe weather, tornadoes and wind and hail. The first thing in the National uh, Storm Prediction Center discussion is significant severe weather episode possible late afternoon evening on Monday. This is very rare for us to see it this far out. So could we even see um, as like a moderate risk again? Uh, definitely very possible. Uh, though I do want to say yesterday's event was moderate risk was a bust. Uh, there was a tor one tornado, but I don't think, other than that, I don't think there was any tornado reports. But yeah, we're going to start with this. We're just going to get rid of this here. And yeah, we're going to start off with the GFS. So to start off, we do see a large amount of CAPE or, um, or on day, f what's going to be the day five event around hour 96 especially for the northern central plains. Now, this is not going to determine everything as we do expect a lot of shear, but yeah, this is going to continue into uh, uh, day six. Um, so yeah, the day five shear continues into day six, and the most shear is around, that was a horrible circle, but around Texas, where we have around 12 to 1500 kilojoules cape, though the risk is going to be more north. And, um, yeah, that's going to be it for that severe weather event. And then, yeah. But um, we're going to go to the wind. And we're just going to look at the shear. So let's pull this up here real quick. And um, I think this is it, the shear. Okay, so the a, we're going to look at the 850 MB wind. Uh, right this one okay there we go so sorry it took me a bit but oops but we do see a lo high level winds of up 50 60 knots across the plains and of course that continues you see it pulls further north into day six so definitely be a worrying severe weather event there and we're gonna uh, go here and look at the vorticity we do see a large amounts of vorticity especially around Texas, Oklahoma. And what, along with the shear, that's gonna definitely favor tornadoes. And, and also we're gonna have strong updrafts, which definitely could mean a big tornado event. And of course, it's more of a linear wind threat as we can see here as we go into day six. Now in terms of wind, uh, just from the, the, the line itself, not even from the severe thunderstorms, if we look at the wind gust swath, we could see up to 50 miles an hour across Kansas, Oklahoma, into Illinois. Now, that's not the severe gusts. That's just, like, from the line moving itself. Um, now we're going to uh, go to the ECMWF where these wind swaths uh, – sorry, can't talk right now. Kansas gets up to 60, not, uh, 60 miles an hour. Um, Missouri, Oklahoma up to 50 miles an hour, so definitely worrying there. So if we're gonna go into the wind shear now, which let's find it, and here. So we're gonna go back here a bit. So definitely the high level winds across Texas, Kansas, Oklahoma, and that's gonna carry on into Illinois, where again, the wind threat will continue. And then of course, I think this is, uh, SBC was talking about another event uh, across the southern plains, which we're seeing there, but we're not going to be talking that now about that right now. But um, yeah, we see the system there, and then the, yeah, here's the big severe weather event, uh, severe weather cape. So European model is not showing as much widespread cape, though we do see larger amounts of cape of up to 
3,000 and 4,000 kilojoules across Kansas, not Kansas, uh, Texas, Panhandle, and Oklahoma. And that continues into Illinois, where we do see up to 1,000 kilojoules of Cape. And then another severe weather event across Texas, the Southern Plains, we could be seeing. And in terms of the lightning flash rate, we are going to um, see a lot of um, the system pop up here. Uh, yeah, so cell, it looks more cellular here, like disorganized cells um, in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. So that's the first line. And then we see more of an organized wind event, which potential supercells along there, but definitely more of a wind threat on day six with the more like linear line kind of looks like a derecho i'm not saying it's a derecho i'm just like kind of looks like it and uh yeah now that's really going to be it for this video and you might be wondering sebastian why is it so short well we're not close enough to look at the nam where we have all the significant tornado parameters csu forecasts aren't very accurate this is far out so really we don't have too much to look at on this website at least uh from what i can see other than the cape the lightning flash rates and the shear and high level winds but and vorticity which we have seen a big tornado threat on day five and a big wind threat on day six and but also there's going to be both threats each day and, and due to the high vorticity as well we could and there's going to be strong updrafts we could be seeing a lot of hail but yeah that's really gonna be it for this video uh but yeah we're gonna have another hurricane video out in a bit and i hope you guys enjoy this video